Hey you guys, it's Shanae, your awesome, amazing leader. I wanted to continue our theme for this month called Unstuck. And I thought it was super cool. My friend Haley is actually working on a great project that's kind of putting her in a bit of a sticky situation. So why don't we see what she's doing? Hey everybody, Haley here. Now, I don't wanna burst my own bubble, but today is gonna get sticky. <laughs> See? <laughs> I've always been amazed at people who can create art out of unexpected objects. So today, I've decided to give it a go myself. <laughs> and guess what my unexpected object is? <laughs> Ta-da! That's right, bubble gum. I've been working hard all morning getting it ready. Whew, I am sure glad I am done with that part. Well, here goes nothing. <sighs> oh, oh, wow, this is stickier than I expected. <laughs> I figure if I'm gonna be creating sculptures, I should start with one of the most famous monuments, the Arc de Triomphe in France. Oh, oh, oui, oui, mademoiselle, le poisson, le fromage. <laughs> I mean, really get into it. Right now it looks like a brain, but we'll get there. Uh, Haley, I don't think that you should chew A, that much gum in one sitting, and uh, B, play with it afterwards. I mean, raise your hand if you do that. <laughs> Anyways, her project reminds me of a really cool true story about how Jesus followers were even put in a bit of a sticky situation. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. The room was crowded. Over 100 followers of Jesus gathered, sat on the floor, or knelt to pray. Peter, always quick to take charge, may have led them. Lord, you told us to wait in Jerusalem. You promised to send your Holy Spirit. Now, just before, Jesus had gathered his closest friends at the Mount of Olives and instructed them to tell everyone about him, from Jerusalem to every nation on earth. But then, right before their eyes, he had been taken up to heaven. You've given us a huge job. We don't know how to do it when you're not here with us. So please, help us. The room stilled as everyone waited, even though they weren't exactly sure what they were waiting for. James and John may have been near a window. Getting windy out there. I'll just close the shutters. I don't think that sound is outside. Uh, uh, everyone stay calm. As the sound like wind rose even higher, a burst of light appeared in the center of the room. It flickered like a fireball, breaking into individual flames. <gasps> what on earth? I don't think it's from earth. As the group watched transfixed, the flames separated and skimmed out until a tongue of fire stood over the head of each believer in the room. Is this? It must be. God's Holy Spirit. As the Spirit of God filled the room and the heart of each believer, something even more incredible happened. Soon, the believers realized what was going on. God has given us the power to speak other languages. Immediately, the believers went out to join the crowds who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Now, these Jews traveled to Jerusalem from many regions and countries where a variety of languages were spoken, so they were shocked to hear the believers talking about Jesus in words they could understand, and each believer responded in their own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? 
Yes, so how do we hear them in our own native languages? We've come from all over. I've met people here from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Asia, Egypt, Libya. But these Galileans are talking about God's wonders in our languages. What does it mean? I think it means they're a little loopy. Loopy? One fish short of a lunch, if you know what I mean. Peter heard the doubters in the crowd, so he gathered the rest of the disciples and made his way up to the very front. My fellow Jews, hey, people! Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over. You nailed him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The crowd listened as the Holy Spirit gave Peter the words to say and helped them understand. Jesus has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. This is what God had promised. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now see and hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. Many people were deeply moved by the words Peter had spoken. So what do we do now? All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to be baptized. Me too. Me three. Then let's get started. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized. With the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter and the disciples were already beginning the big job of telling every nation on earth about Jesus, even before they left Jerusalem. John, I told you having the Holy Spirit would be so helpful. Well, yeah, Peter, I know so many different languages now. Hola, bonjour, salam. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 I know you're excited, but please. Oh, hi, um, I was just finishing my school thing. Arc de Trump. <laughs> Wasn't today's story just awesome? I love how God's Holy Spirit gives us just what we need. He certainly gave the disciples what they needed. God has always had a plan to send a helper. In the Old Testament, people had to go to the temple in order to be near God's presence, and they weren't allowed to be directly next to him. But then, Jesus came on the scene. Yes! He made the way for us to have a direct relationship with God. And because of Jesus, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Once they received the Holy Spirit, the mission of Jesus began to happen. What the disciples could have never done on their own, they were able to do by the power of God's Spirit. And God knew that. He knew that we would need help, so he gave us the Spirit. We don't have to rely on ourselves. Whew. Talk about taking the pressure off. When you believe and put your faith in Jesus, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yay! I love gifts. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit doesn't just help us to accomplish impossible tasks. He is also there to help us and comfort us through difficult times in our lives. Maybe you know of someone who's gone through something tough, like having to move far away from friends or having to get a tooth pulled at the dentist, which I might have to do after this. And maybe you heard that person say, I couldn't have done it without God's help. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus, you don't have to go through things alone. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. Wow, Haley, that was a great explanation. You know, it's kind of funny because our bottom line for this week is, God gives you what you need to keep going. Just how what Haley needs a dentist to keep going, God gives us all the tools that we need in our sticky situations to keep moving forward. Let's not forget our awesome memory verse for the month. It's from Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Wow, isn't that super cool? Now, it doesn't mean gathering up gum. <laughs> It means gathering up all the tools that God gives us to get unstuck. So, we can't get tired either because we need to go boogie with the boogie. Let's go put on our dancing shoes and get jiggy. Lately I've been really watching the nightly news. Don't seem to find the rhythm. Just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops 
Feels like it's never gonna Gotta get that fire fire back in my bones Before my heart heart turns into stone So when somebody please pass the megaphone I'll shout it on the count of three Thank you.